Hello, everyone. I'm Shigang Li, a postdoc researcher from SPCL lab, ETH Zurich. Today, I represent Chimera. Chimera is a novel pipeline parallelism approach, which is proposed for efficiently training large scale neural network models. The key idea of Chimera is to reduce the number of bubbles in the pipeline without introducing staleness in the training process. This work has been accepted by Supercomputing 21. Before getting to the details, let me first show you the evolving trend of modern neural networks. In 2016, one of the most mo popular models for image classification, ResNet50, was proposed. It has 25 million parameters. In around 2018, the first transformer model was proposed for natural language processing. It has more than 200 million parameters. Now, after that, many transformer-based language models emerged with, with rapidly growing model sets. Take GPT-3 as an example. It has 175 billion parameters. For switch transformer, it has 1.6 trillion parameters. A recently proposed model called WuDao 2.0, it has 1.75 trillion parameters. Note that the y-axis is in logarithmic scale. After changing back to linear scale, we can see how large the difference between the model proposed in this year and the model proposed three years ago. If the vanilla transformer model is a small toy, nowadays they evolve to a real optimus. The model size has increased for more than 8,000 times. So what does it mean? Take GPT-3 as an example which is not even the largest model currently. It takes 36 years to train on eight GPUs, which costs millions of dollars. So training for these monsters is both time consuming and money consuming. Now let's look at how to parallelize the training process. Before that, let me first recap what is deep learning. Here we show a simple neural network model and an overall objective function f, in which w denotes the model parameter, and the capital F is the loss function, and the C is the data point sampled from the training data set. The training process is actually to optimize the parameter w to minimize the overall objective function f using optimization algorithms such as SGD. The most simple and popular method to parallelize the training process is data parallelism, in which each worker maintains a copy of the whole model and each worker, and each worker sample different data batch from the, training data, from the training data set. After finishing the computation on the local gradient, all workers will globally synchronize the gradients using an reduce operation. So the advantage of data parallelism is easy to implement. However, it may not work for large scale models simply because the model is too large to fit in device memory. It may also have high or reduced overhead when training for large scale models. The second method called operator parallelism. In many references, they call it uh, model parallelism. However, here, to distinguish it from pipeline parallelism, we prefer to call it model. Uh, we prefer to call it operator parallelism. You will see the difference between these two approaches later. In operator parallelism, the model is partitioned vertically, and each and each worker maintains a slice of the model. Before calculating the local portion of the operator. Each worker has to gather the input data from all the other workers. And this happened for each operator. The advantage of operator parallelism is that it makes large model training feasible because each worker maintains a portion of the whole model. However, it incurs collective communication for each operator or each layer, which is a very high communication overhead. The third method called pipeline parallelism, in which the model is partitioned in a layer-wise way and the consecutive layers form a pipeline stage. 
each worker maintain one pipeline stage. And after finish the execution of the local pipeline stage, each worker has to transfer the output data to the next pipeline stage to progress the whole pipeline. There are several pros and cons for pipeline parallelism. First, it makes large model training feasible, and it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't require collective communication, but only point-to-point -point communication between pipeline stages. However, it may also have drawbacks. It has bubbles in the pipeline, which lowers the efficiency of this approach. Some asynchronous pipeline approaches can remove these bubbles. However, they lead to stillness in the training process, which is considered as uh, not friendly to model convergence. For this work, Chimera aims to solve these problems, namely to reduce the number of bubbles resulting in introducing stillness in the training process. Next, we compare different schemes of pipeline parallelism. Before that, let me first show you what does different shape, different color, and different numbers in this figure mean. For the blue blocks, it represents the computation of the forward path, and the yellow block represents the computation of backward path, and the numbers in each block represent the ID of macro batch. And the dashed block represents the bubbles in the pipeline. Note that the workload of backward path is about two times the workload of forward path. During the comparison, we also involve several important symbols, including D, the number of pipeline stages, and N, the number of macro batches, M theta, the memory consumption for waste, and A, the memory consumption for activations. In these examples, both D and N equal to four. Namely, we have four pipeline stages and we have four macro batches in the pipeline. Now, let me use a simple example to show you how that training process work on a single macro batch. So here in this example, we have four pipeline stages. And the macro batch go from the first stage to, to the last stage to calculate the loss value in the forward path. And then in the backward path, it go from the last stage to the first stage to calculate the gradient for each pipeline stages. Now let's look at how does it work for GPAP. In GPAP, it will ex executing all the forward passes. And after that, it calculate all the backward passes. So in which the arrows represent the point-to-point -point communication between pipeline stages. After that, it flushes the pipeline, namely use the gradient to update the model parameters for each pipeline stage. So this forms a single training iteration. And this training iteration is repeated with different input data until the training process finishes. Next, let's look at the memory consumption. In GPAP, there is one, one model copy. And for the activation memory consumption, it's proportional to the number of micro batches. This is because in the forward path, it has to store the intermediate result, namely the activations. And then subsequently, the activation will be used in backward path to calculate the gradients. However, in GPAP, it will finish all the forward paths first. This means that it has to store the activations for n micro batches. The second method called GMS, which is mainly proposed for training with very small mini batch. Therefore, it, we can see it has many bubbles in the pipeline schedule. For the memory consumption, in GMS, it maintains two model replicas, and it all for the activation memory consumption, it only had to store the activation of a single macro batch. This is because as shown in the pipeline schedule, whenever there is a forward pass, there is a subsequent backward pass will, which will consume the activation. The third method is called DEPO. In DEPO, it uses one forward, one backward 
scheduled method. For brevity, we call it 1F1B here. Compared with GPIP, DIPO has the same number of bubbles in the pipeline. However, benefiting from this 1F1B scheduled method, GPIP can bound the activation memory consumption by D. This is because at the beginning of the pipeline, DIPO execute D micro batches in the forward passes. And after that, as soon as there is a new forward pass, there is a subsequent backward pass, which consumes the activation of a single min a macro batch. Note that all these three pipeline approaches are synchronous pipeline scheme, which means that it has the same output result as the standard min batch SGD, in which the model convergence is already well proved. In the contrast, we also have asynchronous pipeline schemes, such as PipeDream and PipeDream 2BW. The, for these asynchronous pipeline schemes, they do not have bubble issue, but they introduce stillness in the training process. Namely, they use an elder version of ways to compute the gradient, which is considered, which is considered as not friendly to convergence. Although they show promising empirical result, the generality of asynchronous approach is not well proved. Now let's look at the memory consumption. For PipeDream, it uses waste stashing, and which means that it has high memory overhead for the waste. In PipeDream 2BW, it maintains two versions of waste. And for the activation memory consumption, both methods can bound the activation memory consumption by D because they all use 1F1B scheduling method. And at last, we show our approach, uh, Chimera. Chimera is also a synchronous pipeline approach, namely that the model convergence is already well proved. Compared with other three synchronous pipeline approaches, Chimera significantly reduced the number of bubbles in the pipeline. For the memory consumption, Chimera by default maintains two model replicas. And uh, for the activation memory consumption, similar to 1F1B scheduling method, Chimera can bound the activation memory consumption by D. Furthermore, we can see the activation memory consumption among the workers are more balanced in cameras than all the other approaches. In this table, we compare the different pipeline schemes in detail in terms of number of bubbles, memory consumption, and the convergence of friendliness. We can see Chimera achieves the best balance of all aspects. For more detailed analysis, please refer to the paper. Now let's look at how to achieve the pipeline schedule of Chimera. By default, Chimera has two model replicas. In model replica zero, the pipeline stage zero to three are deployed to worker zero to worker three respectively. In model replica one, the pipeline stages are deployed to the workers in a completely reverse order as model replica zero. Next, there are D micro batches to schedule on these two model replicas. On each model rep replica, there are half D micro batches. And within each model replica, these half D micro batches are scheduled in 1F1B method. In the first pipeline state, in the first pipeline, the message transfer from the top stage to bottom stage in the forward pass. In the second pipeline, the message trans transfer from the bottom stage to top stage. Therefore, we call these two pipelines down pipeline and the up pipeline respectively. More importantly, these two pipelines can be merged without any conflict. So this forms the basic schedule of Chimera. So in the Greek math, Chimera is a hybrid creature, which is combined by different animals. 
which is uh, analogous to our pipeline scheme here. Therefore, we call our, our approach Chimera. After considering that the backward pass has two times the workload of forward pass, we achieve a more realistic pipeline schedule for Chimera here, as shown in the bottom figure. Now let's look at how to synchronize the gradients between model replicas. By default, there are two model replicas in Chimera. The straightforward method is to synchronize the gradient after all the local computation is finished. As shown in this figure, after all the backward paths are finished, we synchronize the gradient for pipeline stage two, and then stage one, stage three, and stage zero. However, we can do better than this. What we can do is to e eagerly conduct gradient synchronization after the last backward pass on a specific pipeline stage is finished. So in this figure, the arrows indicate the last, the last backward pass on each model rep replica. Take pipeline stage three as an example. After the backward pass of micro batch three, and the micro batch one finished, we can conduct the gradient synchronization on stage three immediately after this. So in this way, we can achieve a more deeper overlap for communication and the computation. Therefore, this helps to reduce the overall training time. Now let's look at how Chimera support a hybrid of pipeline and the data parallelism. So in this figure, it shows the example with four workers and four pipeline stages and the two model replicas in Chimera. But how about we have more than four workers? In this example, we show how to scale from four workers to eight workers. The idea is to duplicate the pipeline schemes to more workers and uh, with different input micro batches. Here we can see the model is duplicated by two times, there, which we call it the Ys of the pipeline. We use W for variety here, W equal to two. And in the gradient synchronization, we synchronize the gradient on the uh, all the replicas of a specific of a specific pipeline stage. In this way. Chimera support a hybrid of pipeline, uh, pipeline and data parallelism to scale to more number of nodes. Now let's look at how to scale to more number of micro batches. In our previous example of Chimera, there are D micro batches in the pipeline schedule. However, how about we have more than D micro batches? So in this example, we have two D micro batches how to combine this schedule together. The idea is to treat this D micro batches as a basic scheduling unit. And then we concatenate this basic schedule unit. A straightforward method is to directly concatenate this basic scheduling unit, just like this. However, because the uneven workload of forward pass and backward pass it incurs intermediate bubbles at the joint of the concatenation. And the number of intermediate bubbles increases as the number of basic units increases, which is bad. We do not want this. Therefore, we propose another method called forward doubling. So the basic idea of forward doubling is to make the workload of forward pass and backward pass even. And after that, we can concatenate these units together without intermediate, without intermediate bubbles. However, in this method, we have to double the workload of forward pass, which means that we have 2x activation memory consumption, which may lead to out of memory and further rely on activation recomputation to get rid of uh, out of memory. We have the third method, backward halving. So in this method, it's similar to forward doubling, but uh, we do not 
doubling the workload of forward pass. Alternatively, we half the workload of backward pass. And then we concatenate the basic units together without intermediate bubbles. However, in this approach, we have to half the micro batch size, which may lower the utilization of computer resources, such as the GPU. Among all these three methods, which one is the best is not a priori. We rely on empirical results to select the best method. Next, let's discuss how to generalize Chimera to combine more than two pipelines. In all previous examples, we discuss the pipeline schedule of Chimera, which combine two pipelines. Here we show an example. Uh, we have four pipelines and uh, we have eight pipeline stages. In the four pipelines, we have two down pipelines and the two up pipelines. We can show that these four pipelines can be merged together without a conflict. And this forms the pipeline schedule of Chimera, which combine four pipelines. And we also have four model replicas. Compared with Chimera with the two pipelines, these four pipelines further reduce the number of bubbles. So generally, we can prove that if the number of stages V is an even value, Chimera can be generalized to combine from one to D pipelines together. For more details, please refer to the paper. As the number of pipelines increase, the number of bubbles in the pipeline decreases. However, the waste memory consumption and the co corresponding gradient synchronization overhead increases. So empirically, Chimera set, uh, Chimera use two pipeline as the default setting to achieve the best performance. Now let's look at how to build a performance model for Chimera to help to select the best configuration of the DAS and the WISE of the pipeline. So here in this example, we show a pipeline schedule with four pipeline, with, with six pipeline stages and the two model replicas. And then we identify one critical path in the pipeline schedule of a single training iteration. And after that, we count the number of forward passes in the critical path and the number of backward passes in the critical path. And then the runtime of the critical path is modeled by the overall overhead of the, uh, the overall computation and the communication overhead of all the forward passes and the backward passes in the critical path. And then we consider the overhead for all reduce. Because we focus on large scale model training, we suppose Rabin Symphonar algorithm is used for all reduce in which the bandwidth term is optimal. Next, we identify the regions in the pipeline schedule which can be utilized to overlap the overhead of all reduce. And at last, the unoverlapped all reduce overhead contribute to the overall runtime of a single training iteration. And eventually, the runtime of single iter training iteration is modeled in this formula. For a given number of models, for a given number of workers, we enumerate all the possible configurations for the DAS and the WISE. And then we select the configuration with the best performance predicted by the performance model. We evaluate the performance on Pistent supercomputer. In Pistent, each computer node has one Intel Zone CPU and one NVIDIA P100 GPU, and the computer nodes are connected by Korea areas connected network. And we also evaluate the performance on a small cluster with V100 GPUs, which has a heterogeneous interconnected network, in, including NVLink and uh, InfiniBand. We compare the performance of Chimera with all the baselines discussed previously, including GPEP, GSM, Depo, PipeDream, and PipeDream 2BW, which covers the state of the art. All the schemes are implemented in 
PyTorch with Glue as the distributed backend. Uh, here we cannot use Nico as the backend because Nico in PyTorch doesn't support point-to-point -point communication. To use Nico for Oridus and uh, use Glue for point-to-point -point communication at the same time also doesn't work. This is also founded in the work of PyTorch. We use the transformer-based language models for evaluation, including BERT and the GPT-2. During the co comparison, we involve several important symbols, including D is the number of pipeline stages, W is the number of replicated pipelines, B is the micro batch size, and B height is the mini batch size, and R to indicate that Activation recomputation is required to get rid of out of memory. First, let's look at the memory consumption result on GPT-2. To better understand the result, we present the uh, memory consumption uh, analysis for all the approaches here. For the for Camera, we can see the memory consumption is uh, more balanced among the workers. For Depo, it has a similar maximum memory consumption as uh, Chimera. However, the memory consumption among our workers is distributed in a wider range. For GMS, it has the lowest memory consumption, but this is at a cost of many bubbles in the pipeline. For GPAP, because the activation memory consumption is pro proportional to the number of micro batches, it cannot scale to large, large number of micro batches. Therefore, it triggers out of memory for all three configurations. For PipeStream, it uses waste stashing, which means that it has high overhead for waste memory. Therefore, it triggers out of memory for all three configurations. For PipeStream 2BW, it has a similar result to Depo except the third configuration, which Pepsium to be W triggers out of memory. This is because it uh, maintains two versions of waste and also for the activation memory consumption is unbalanced among other workers. For memory consumption result on BERT, it has a similar result to, uh, it has a similar result to GPT-2. Next, we present performance tuning for all the baselines. Because the parameter of D, W, and B affect the performance significantly, we would like to select the best configuration for each baseline and then compare it with the camera. So here we can see for each baseline, it has a large tuning space. And at last, we choose the configuration with the highest tuning throughput for each baseline. Similarly, for GPT-2, we do performance tuning for all the baselines. Next, we present the performance modeling result of Chimera. We call that the runtime of a single training iteration is modeled by this formula. And the experimental result from BERT and the GPT-2 shows that the predicted performance by the model has less than 10% error compared with the real performance. This means that we can utilize the performance model to approximately select the best configuration for Chimera. Next, we present the weak scaling result. So this figure shows the result for GPT-2 on 500 GPUs to 2000 GPUs. And for all the baselines and the camera, we show the best performance. We can see camera outperforms all the baselines, especially on 2000 GPUs, it achieves 1.3 to 2.3 speed up over the synchronous pipeline approaches. This is because first, it has less bubbles in the, in the pipeline. And the second, benefiting from balanced memory consumption, it doesn't require activation recomputation to get rid of out of memory. 
for the asynchronous pipeline approaches, Chimera slightly outperformed Hypergym to be W, which is because, again, it has more balanced memory consumption. Therefore, it doesn't require activation recomputation. Compared with Hypergym, Chimera significantly in improve the training throughput. This is because for PipeDream, it conducts uh, gradient synchronization for each backward pass, which means that it has a very high communication overhead for all radios. The weak scaling result um, for BERT um, piston and the weak scaling result for BERT uh, on the cluster with V100 GPUs we have the similar conclusion. Next, we present the result when scaling to a large number of micro batches. Here, we show the result for BERT. We can see among all three methods, the camera with, with direct concatenation achieve the best performance. However, it still has lower performance is um, to be W. This is because uh, for direct concatenation in camera, it uh, incurs intermediate bubbles as discussed previously. When scaling to large number of micro batches for GPT-2, we has a slightly different result. Among all the three methods for camera, including direct uh, concatenation, forward doubling, and backward halving, Chimera with forward doubling achieves the best performance. It also achieves higher training throughput than PipeDream to be W. This result can be explained by the difference between the pipeline schedules of these two approaches. Recall that this is the pipeline schedule for Chimera with forward doubling. We can see the point-to-point -point communication between pipeline stages in the forward path can be overlapped uh, with the intermediate computation on the forward path. However, in PipeDream to be W, it uses one F one B scheduling method. There is uh, almost no space to overlap this point-to-point -point communication. Overall. Camera with forward doubling has more space to overlap P2P communication. Therefore, it performs better. At last, I present the result for Camera, which combine more than two pipelines together. We can see as the number of pipelines increase, the performance of Camera increase first and then decrease. In the first configuration, it achieves the best performance with four pipelines. In the second configuration, it achieves the best performance with two pipelines. So this result can be explained by the trade-off between the number of bubbles in the pipeline and the gradient synchronization overhead. As the number of pipelines increases, the number of bubbles in the pipeline decreases. However, the width memory consumption and the corresponding gradient synchronization overhead increases. When there is only one pipeline in Chimera, it is similar to the traditional synchronous pipeline scheme, such as uh, GPIP and DIPO, which suffer from uh, which suffer from bubble problems. However, after increasing the number of pipelines to D, is equivalent to traditional data parallelism, which do not have bubble problem but has high overhead for gradient synchronization. Therefore, in Chimera, it selects to use two pipelines as the default setting to achieve the best performance. At last, I conclude this work. So first, we present the evolving trend of modern neural networks, namely the model size is growing from large to larger. And then, we compare different approaches for distributed training for deep learning, especially for pipeline parallelism. And then we present the pipeline schedule of Chimera and discuss how to 
scale chimera to more number of micro batches and how to generalize it to combine more than two pipelines together. After that, we present performance modeling, which helps to select the best configuration of the death and the wise pipeline in Chimera. And at the last, we evaluate the performance on supercomputer and uh, a small cluster with newer GPUs and the heterogeneous interconnected network. The results show that Chimera significantly outperforms the synchronous pipeline approaches because of a less number of bubbles in the pipeline. Compared with the state-of-the-art asynchronous pipeline approach, Chimera is on par in terms of training throughput. For the future work, we will study how Chimera works with sparse training and memory saving techniques. This is all the content for my presentation. Any questions?